Hello. The objective of this video is to learn how to multiply and divide rational numbers. Let's talk about a little bit of vocabulary first. Reciprocal. Reciprocal is the multiplicative, multiplicative inverse of a number. The fraction version of the given number turned upside down. That's another way of putting the multiplicative inverse of a number. When you multiply a number by its reciprocal, the product, or answer, is 1. To write that algebraically, the reciprocal of x is 1 over x. The fraction version of x flipped upside down. The reciprocal of a over b is b over a. Numerator. Hopefully we all know what a numerator and denominator is. The numerator is the top number of a fraction. The denominator is the bottom number of a fraction. Integer operation rules apply to rational numbers as well. You remember when we did the adding and subtracting of fractions and rational numbers? Uh, we still follow the same rules there. We did the keep it, change it, change it for subtraction. We follow the addition rules for addition. Uh, but as far as the rules for integer operation rules for multiplying and dividing, they hold true for rational numbers as well. Which means if you have the same sign on both numbers, both fractions, the answer is going to be positive. If you have the opposite sign on both fractions, the answer is going to be negative. Rational numbers does not include, I'm uh, oh, sorry, rational numbers does include decimals. However, I'm going to be focusing in on just the fractions in this video. You can use a calculator for the decimal ones. I'm not going to go into the details on decimals in this class. So here we have, ne there's one other thing you need to know here. Negative 3 fifths with a negative 3 on the top and then positive 5 on the bottom, that's the same as writing it as negative in the same line as the fraction bar. That's the same thing. That's still negative 3 fifths. If I put the negative on the bottom, it's still negative 3 fifths. So don't be confused when the minus sign, the negative sign, is on the top, bottom, or in the middle here. It makes the fraction negative. Does that mean both numbers are negative? No, because negative 3 over negative 5 would be a negative divided by a negative. Same signs being divided, you would have a positive answer. So only one negative sign is needed to make the whole fraction negative. Multiplying fractions. When it comes to the rules for multiplying fractions, what you're going to do is you're going to do top times top will give you the top number of the answer. Bottom times bottom gives you the bottom number of the answer. And then you reduce your answer accordingly. Here we have 3 fifths times 4 ninths. So that's going to be, the top is going to be 3 times 4. Top times top. Bottom is going to be bottom times bottom. 5 times 9. Which is going to give me 12 over 45. And then I need to reduce accordingly. So I've got to ask myself, is there a common factor between these two numbers? Well, both of them are divisible by 3. So I'm going to divide them both by 3, and that's going to give me 4 over 15. Can that be reduced any further? No. So that would be my final answer, and I would box or circle it. Here's some other examples of multiplying fractions. Here we have negative 3 fifths times 4 sevenths. So we do top times top is going to give me a negative 12. Bottom times bottom is going to give me a positive 35. Negative times a positive, we know our answer is going to be negative. That's the integer operation rules. They apply here. Top times top gives you the top. Bottom times bottom gives you the bottom. And then I ask, can it be reduced from there? In this case, there are no common factors between 35 and 12, so that's your final answer. Here, negative times a negative. Our answer is going to be positive. Same signs, so the answer is going to be positive. 2 times 3 is 6. Top times top, top number. Bottom times bottom, 9 times 8 is 72. That can be reduced because they're both even. Whenever you see both the top and bottom number being even numbers, you know at the very least they can both be divided by 2, and they have that common factor of 2. In this case, 6 is a common factor between 6 and 72. 6 goes into 6 once, 6 goes into 72 12 times. There's our reduced fraction. 
Now, some of you may remember from earlier grades about cross-simplifying. And yes, in this particular one, I could have done some cross-simplifying. I'm not going to go into great detail on cross-simplifying because, yes, it could make it faster. It could make the numbers simpler. But in the end, at this point in your education, I want to make sure that you just have a basic review of the actual operations, what it is you need to do. Could you cross-simplify this? Yes. I can see that I have even numbers here and here, so I can divide that by 2, divide that by 2, and I get 4. Here I have a common factor of 3, so if I divide this by 3, I get 3. I divide this by 3, I get 1. So I have 1 times 1 gives you 1, 3 times 4 gives me 12. I wouldn't have to do that simplifying at the end there if I had done the cross simplifying at the beginning. If you can do that, great. If you're not sure, simplify at the end. It's more important that you get this answer correct than you have the most simplified answer. All right, now I'd like you to take a moment to pause the video and try these four problems, and we'll go over them in a minute. Welcome back. All right. We have 3 sevenths times negative 2 thirds. Top times top is going to give me negative 6. Bottom times bottom is going to give me 21. Both of those have a common factor of 3. 6 divided by 3 gives me 2. Still going to be negative. 21 divided by 3 gives me 7. There's my final answer. Over here at number 2, negative times negative. I'm going to have a positive answer. 1 times 7 is 7. 5 times 9 is 45. No common factors between those two, so the answer is 7 45ths. Now here, you may have been confused because you saw a whole number, not a fraction here. Well, remember, every whole number can be written as a fraction by putting it over 1. So it still follow the same rules. Top times top. 4 times 3 is 12. One, bottom times bottom. 1 times 8 is 8. In this case, we end up with an improper fraction. I could convict to convert to mixed number first, or I could simplify first. I see I've got a common factor of 4. Divide them both by 4, and I'm going to get 3 over 2. 2 goes into 3 once. That's one whole with 1 left over, so that goes on top of the denominator. 1 and 1 half. That's my final answer. Over here, again, I could write the 10 as a fraction by putting it over 1. Top times top gives me the top number of 40. Bottom times bottom gives me the bottom number of 5. Again, I've got an improper fraction. In this case, if I do the 40 divided by 5, I get a whole number. 40 divided by 5 is going to give me 8. And that's my final answer there. So that's the multiplying fractions. Dividing rational numbers. When you divide rational numbers, you never actually divide by a fraction. Never divide by a fraction. Instead, you're going to multiply by a reciprocal. Now, you remember with the integer stuff, we said we're not subtracting anymore. We're adding the opposite. When it comes to dividing fractions, we're not going to divide fractions. We're going to multiply the reciprocal. So instead of multiplying, you're going to multiply by two. So we're good. Look. Remember the uh, subtraction rules, we said to keep it, change it, change it. With when you're dividing fractions, the rule is keep it, change it, flip it. So this particular problem, I've got 3 fifths divided by a third. Keep the 3 fifths as is. Change division to multiplication. Flip the second fraction. The reciprocal of 1 third is 3 over 1. Keep it, change it, flip it. 3 times 3 is 9. 5 times 1 is 5. I convert to an improper fraction. So convert the improper fraction to a mixed number. I get 1 and 4 fifths because 5 goes into 9 once with 4 left over. Why is this working? Well, think about division, what division is. When you've got 6 divided by 2, you're being asked how many 2's are there in 6. And you, remember how, you may remember having to group things like this. I have 3 sets of 2 in 6. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. 
Well, when you're dividing by a fraction, you're asking how many halves there are in five. Well, inside of this one, there are two halves. Every one of these has two halves. So I have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten halves in five. So when I do the keep it, change it, flip it, I'm doing five times two over one, I get ten. This is why it works, because when you're dealing with fractions, this grouping thing is a little different. So keep it, change it, flip it for division. Again, we got a you do. Remember, the best way to learn math is to do math. So if you're trying these four problems, pause the video, try them, and we'll go over them in a second here. Welcome back. Keep it, three-fifths, change it to multiplication, change this, to flip this, you get three halves. Top times top, top times top gives me nine, bottom times bottom gives me 10. That cannot be reduced any further. There's my answer. Keep it. Change it to multiplication, flip it. Top times top gives me 36. Bottom times bottom gives me 10. Both of those are even, so I know I can divide by 2. And I've got an improper fraction. But first I'm going to divide by 2. I get 18 over 5. 5 goes into 18 three times with 3 left over. So I get 3 and 3 fifths as my final answer. Keep it, change it, flip it. Well, that's a whole number. But remember, every whole number can be expressed as a fraction by putting it over 1. So in this case, we've got negative 1 fifth. That's the keeping that the same. Change division to multiplication. Flip the whole number, you get 1 over 10. Top times top, opposites means I'm going to get a negative sign here. 5 times 10 gives me 50. I can't reduce that any further. That's my final answer there. Negative times a negative means I'm going to get a positive. Negative divided by a negative. Same thing, I'm going to get positive. Here I'm going to do the keep it, change it from, from division to multiplication, and flip it. So instead of having negative 1 over 2, I'm going to have negative 2 over 1. Negative times negative gives me a positive, so I'm going to get 8 over 5, which reduces to 1 and 3 fifths for my final answer. Hopefully this has been very helpful. I'll see you in class.